Lights. I'm here with... Uh, hi, I'm Nathan um, from Roby. I'm the uh, lead creative designer for Roby. And my name is Andy Webb and I'm a freelance designer and co-design with Nathan. And how does, that, uh, how does that relationship work with you guys? How do you work together on a, on a show? Um, it works really well because, as I say, we come from different backgrounds. You know, so I've come from like, the live sector, Andy comes from the theatre side. So the shows have become very dynamic. Um, and you know, Andy's really good at breaking the music down and working with the performers that we have on stage. Um, so I leave that to him. And, and I'm usually behind the console, um, and it comes together yeah. really well. Yeah, it's been nice uh, sort of the last few years is we've been working with music producers as well. So I'd spend time in the music studio to start with, creating the tracks, which allows us to be much more uh, experimental with what we're doing and breaking tracks down to a frame of a second in a sound or maybe a cymbal crash. Um, so obviously we're pushing ourselves to the limit, which obviously then we need consoles that can cope with what we're trying to create. Um, and Nathan, uh, particularly, you've been using our products for quite a long time. Now, yeah, I've been uh, using Nova Lights for over 10 years. Cut my teeth really on the uh, Tiger Touch. And uh, yeah, it's been really great, you know, seeing the progression with the software from using the pixel mapping, allowing us to, you know, to put simple colour effects across a rig without the needs of a media server. And now obviously going into you know, keyframe, you know, and obviously now the new timeline. Obviously we still do use Shape Generator. It does come out the bag occasionally. You know, there's some times where we do find that it is useful, but now that we're pretty much living in keyframe world and in the timeline world. So obviously my background is more theatrical. Um, so I didn't actually start using Avalites until I met Nathan. Mm. So I was a 088 strand boy. A little bit etc -y, uh, because obviously most of the time he laughs at me saying that you know i'm just a massive long fade of 30 seconds on all my cues um, but yeah i'm i'm sort of fairly new to avo uh, but i'm really enjoying it now because it is so much touchscreen based um, and kind of visual and i think that's for all designers if it's visual and less reading or button pressing it helps out if i can just grab things so for me yeah i'm enjoying it with uh, theater shows uh, obviously we've worked together on making things better in terms of cue stacks and things so that it's working great for me in a theater environment and being able to link things like this but i'm certainly nowhere near at the level of programming as what the <laughs> wan is <laughs> uh, while you were working with QList, which was presumably your workflow before yeah. before timeline what what would you say were the particular challenges? What was taking you too long, for example, to achieve? The, the timeline now allows us to be to program in more of a busking way, mm. Mm. Um, because previously when we've been programming QList, you know, there was stuff that we really wanted to pick out of the track, and we couldn't pick it out of the track because you know the on-offs would be so close mm. together, or there'd be so many of them repeated through the track, yeah. and that would always put us off because I'd just he'd go, "If you're really good, if we could do this, this, this," I'd be like, "You're mm. on a laugh." <laughs> because I just can't physically put all the cues in the desk, whereas now is the timeline, mm. I can busk it. That'd be great. So we can literally just go bus, 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 put it in, tidy it up, um, mm. and then play it back. And then if we need to copy and paste it, that really helps mm. us as well. So one of the things we like uh, about the new timeline is the fact that we can actually busk the tracks in as it would do if it's a live event. And then once we finish with that experimenting, we can go back and repeat and play stuff. So once we've added the playback into the timeline, obviously we can just drag over the front part of it so we can start the event earlier or shorten the event. And also we can adjust the fade time in and fade time out. So as well as being able to snap in my playbacks, I really enjoy the fact that I can actually use the live tracking on the playbacks as well. And it actually puts it in as I bring it up and down into the timeline. And then I can adjust how the wave behaves if I want it to snap out or if I wanted to move again, if I want to drag one of the bars. So I can adjust the levels and adjust the way that it behaves. Yeah, so one of the ways that we generally work is that we create um, a page full of playbacks with our ideas and the way we want to see it work and then basically we can just copy and paste into the timeline which is really handy as well. So just by grabbing copy and the cue that we want to paste allows us to drop it into the timeline and then we can also adjust the fade that we want it to come into and obviously I can drag it the event as well backwards and forwards 
which it makes the process for us a lot faster than using existing queue tables that we were using previously because it's a lot more visual on the screen. Um, and this just allows us now to make more complex shows with more events happening um, within the same sequences. One of the really nice things that we really found that we like on the timeline now is the fact that with our, most of our shows that are really complex and have lots of cues in them, that we can actually now set the legend to being multicoloured so that we can set certain parts of the track to a certain colour, so we can put the halos on them so that we know when the event is happening and also it corresponds to the keys down here. It's, it's the visual element, isn't it, Nath? Because yeah. obviously I spend a lot of the time on the Reaper and the time code, which I'm used to seeing time codes and finding the points. Yeah. Nath does a lot on Adobe with all the video editing. Yeah. So now having a format that we both can instantly look at, mm -hmm. rather than just seeing a list of numbers <coughs> and, and a table, it's much easier because if I've got like a wave bit, you know, you can see with some of the stuff that's on there now, I know that it matches with a piece of sound right. and it gives us that visual clue to get us somewhere in the right point. So do you want to tell us the creative benefits that the keyframe engine brought compared to the shape generator? Yeah, the keyframe allows us, you know, to simply add like uh, movements and colours or movement and, you know, dimmer effects together, whereas we were limited with the shape generator because, you know, you had to stick within the parameters and you could never sync the parameters either. So if you want to do like a flick up and the lights go off at the top and come back on at the bottom, um, it's easy to do now and obviously we can do waves across them. So it just gives us a lot more dynamics, you know, and, um, and to be able to sync multiple attributes and the fixtures together is a big plus for me. So we're just trying to push like any designer is. We're just trying to push the creative level to mm -hmm. the next level and, you know, we don't want to be limited. And the other thing, I don't really want to be thinking about how I'm going to do something, you know, because that sort of takes it away. Yeah. I really want to be thinking, actually, we need to do this, you know, it's a benefit to us because we just want to make our shows look better every time. And, you know, and the stuff we do on the trade shows and, and the videos we do, you know, thousands of people watch the videos and, you know, we hope that we, you know, people get inspiration from them, want to use the product. So we have to push the product as well, but we need the tools obviously to push the products. And mm -hmm. I think now that, you know, this is coming definitely in the right direction of where we need to be. Okay. So, Steve, you know, I'm fed up with beta testing your software, so when can we have this? So, good news, Nathan. Uh, Titan V15 is due out in yeah. April, and the timeline is part of that. Uh, and that's across all the console platforms from uh, Titan Mobile all the way up. Uh, and the D9 hardware is already available. So, Andy, you hold him, and I'll get the van. Sounds like a plan. <laughs>Guys, you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, hi, I'm Nathan. Um, I'm the lead creative designer for Roby. Um, I work closely with 
I'll let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when do you want to step in? Well, I don't know, because last time you said my name and then I Yeah, I'm not going to say that. No, you're not going to say that. So I'm going to stop and then you're going to okay. say. Yeah. Right. Um,